All right, look, Four of Wands is at the bottom of the deck. Underneath the Four of Wands is the Queen of Cups to the star, to the Ten of Pentacles. You guys, in order to complete these cycles, you have to acknowledge the emotions. You have to feel through it. The only way you are going to really be able to be solid and balanced and foundational, Four of Wands, is facing your emotions, Queen of Cups. That's when the healing happens. Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. Happy Friday. Yes, we are at the end of the week. It is the weekend, y'all. I hope you guys had a good week, um, even though it's been a pretty rough week energetically, right? Uh, in terms of what we've been talking about over the week. But I also hope you have a fantastic weekend. So, this is going to be your general energy reading for your day or for whenever you are guided to watch this reading. So please keep in mind that this is, this is a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, this is a timeless reading. So again, whenever you're guided to watch this reading and it resonates, then that's the message for you in that moment, yeah? So, um, a lot to talk about and uh, to be honest with you guys, I feel like we do need to have a separate discussion in terms of resentment and healing and working on letting go. Somebody um, in the comments last uh, yesterday, uh, I believe goes by the name of Nikki, hi Nikki, um, raised a very good point. Um, and if you guys haven't seen that comment, uh, maybe go back and check it out. But Nikki does raise a very good point in terms of the fine line between feeling things and working through things and then maybe feeling things too much or getting stuck in a certain feeling, whatnot, whatever. Um, and I absolutely do want to address that. However, I was thinking, I was trying to think it through this morning and figure out how I wanted to approach it because when I first read Nikki's comment, I thought that's an excellent point and that's definitely something that we need to talk about but I don't think I want to do it in morning coffee. I think, I honestly really think I want to do it as a completely like separate, almost like vlog post in which we talk about it. Um, and the reason why I want to do it that way is because I really want to be able to sit down and collect my thoughts on it and I don't want to miss anything. So I feel, I, I was so this morning I was trying to figure out if I wanted to do it actually in morning coffee like she asked or if I wanted to go with my, my gut or my first instinct and to record a separate video. And I do think I want to record a separate video for it because I really want to be able to collect my thoughts and make it somewhat concise and really try and not miss anything. So look out for that, okay? But thank you. Thank you for your comment. Thank you for sharing your piece. Uh, it is fantastic, so wonderful to be back. I am so happy to be back. Um, and so look out for that. We're going to talk about that. But again, I want to be able to collect, like sit down with it and collect my thoughts. And then I'll record a separate video in terms of that. Yeah. All right, guys. So um, I don't want to, other than that, I don't really have story time. Like if I was going to do story time, that's what we would talk about. But again, I want to collect my thoughts. So we're just going to get into this today for our weekend. Closing out our week, we are continuing with the True Heart Intuitive Tarot. And then we will be getting some clarification from the Los Carabello deck. And then we will cross the Oracle Bridge when we get there, yeah? All right, y'all, let's get into this and see what messages we have for today. Here we go. Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of the places, situations, situationships, circumstances, and relationships in which we all need it the most.
Thank you so very much, Spirit. Alrighty, y'all, let's get into this. We're gonna give this five shuffles, yeah? One. Let's see what we've got today. What's going on? What do we want to talk about today? Okay. <sighs> At the bottom of the deck, overall energy, you do have the world. All right. So this cycle, there's, there, there's completion. There's definitely completion happening here. And it's very much in alignment with what we were talking about yesterday in terms of like doing the work and like getting there and, and being, okay, being a creative powerhouse of your life or taking responsibility, taking control of your power, accepting what is, accepting what has been in your life or actually the way it's coming through, accepting the reality of your life and actively doing something about it. Not necessarily being passive and just kind of pushing it away. And again, we're going to get into this, but I kind of feel like this is like a precursor to it. And I don't mean any offense by this. I'm not trying to say, you know, ah, you're, eh, you're not doing it right, man. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying here is there is an element of taking control taking your power back, being the master manifester in your life, taking, uh, accepting the reality of what it is you've experienced in your life, not to say that you are directly to blame for it, obviously, but accepting the reality of what it is that your life and making a change, being in the active seat of manifesting your dreams and your desires, sure, but manifesting or, or creating the change in your life that you want to see. You have the magician with the chariot, okay? So the chariot is you being in the driver's seat. But that real energy of, of, of taking responsibility, taking control, the magician, okay? You have that with the ten of wands and the five of wands. This is interesting. So, okay, the first thing that comes to mind with the Ten of Wands and the Five of Wands here in terms of this energy is differing of opinion in terms of how things work out for you. And that's where, or, or not, not necessarily how things work out for you, but how you handle something. How you handle something is completely your choice. That's, that's between you and yourself. There is no one-size-fits-all type of situation. However, in terms of what we're talking about here, there is a level of needing to face certain things. There is a level of needing to sit down and say, okay, I see what's happened or I see what's going on here or I see what it is I've been cycling through, but I am making the conscious decision to change that. I am making the conscious, conscious decision to rewrite the programming. I'm making the conscious decision to manifest something different in my life, but you do that in terms of learning from the contrast, having gone through something, having experienced it within your own life, and then taking within the context of the situation, taking what it is you have, you can learn from it, or what it is, I guess we could say what it is you could deduce from it, and then making a change from there, manifesting a change from there. And there comes a point where at some, at some level, you're going to have to face something. That doesn't mean sitting there and wallowing in it. That doesn't mean constantly having to, well, it depends. See, okay, I guess we really are talking about this. It depends on how deep the wound is. And that's what I was saying yesterday from that meme that I saw. Depending on how deep some sort of trauma or wounding can is or will it can be, 
that's going to dictate or that's going to be directly related to how long it's going to take you to heal from it, to move through it, to get to a place where it you can look at it or you can it can pop up in your memory or something can trigger a memory of it and it no longer holds you back. It no longer really hurts you any longer. But in order for you to do that, you can't keep pushing it away. You can't keep running away from it. You have to face it on some level, even if that is just sitting there and saying, okay, acknowledging it and saying, okay, I see that pain. Oh, okay, all right, that's been triggered again. Okay, fine. I see that. What am I gonna do about it? The magician, what am I gonna do about it? So, uh, I'm gonna, I really, I, I mm, sorry you guys. <laughs> I'm having an internal conflict right now because I do want to record a separate video and yet it's coming out here. So I'm really trying to collect my thoughts and make this as concise as possible. But like, I, in terms of this, I keep I keep hearing a phrase from one of Janet Jackson's albums. It's the it's the Velvet Rope. At the very end of the album, she has this whole this song in which she says she states, "You can't run away from your pain." Because wherever you run, there you will be. You have to learn to water your spiritual garden. Then you will be free. And it's not about, again, it's not about wallowing within it. It's not about saying we're, we're talking about feeling it so much that you're just swimming in a soup of, of sorrow and like you, you, you can't find your way out. But for me personally, and, I, and I, I speak for myself, but then also I really kind of believe there's a certain level of this that's applicable to quite a few situations, but like I couldn't not face things any longer. The more I tried to push it away, the longer it took for me to heal from it, to deal with it. I had to, especially this past week, I had to literally sit down with myself and sit down with what it is I was feeling and say, okay, and process it and, okay, and say, okay, Eric, what does this mean for me? What is this trying to teach me? How can I manifest something new? How can I change the narrative in terms of this and manifest something in my life that is better? That is more in alignment with me, more in alignment with the, with the direction that I want to move in. And that specifically had to do with had to do with ways that I had been conditioned or ways that I had grow, grow up, grew, grown up feeling like myself, my true natural self as I was when I was born or as I was intended to be when I decided to incarnate into this world, I had to rewrite the programming of all of that. And in order for me to rewrite that programming, I had to sit down and I had to feel through what I was experiencing and I had to let the memories come up. And I had to face them. I had to look at them and see them for what they are and recognize that whatever it is I felt conditioned into being, that was number one, a direct product of my environment. That was a direct product of society. That was a direct product of how I was taught um, and what was instilled within me as a child, which, which flies directly in the face of who I really am as a soul. And my, I, my experience, I needed to have that experience in order for me to get back to the truth of who I am and then decide to say, okay, we're putting an end to that and we're rising above it. We're growing out of it, okay? We're creating, we're creating something new consciously in terms of the direction that you want to move in. However, 10 of wands, five of wands, there is an inner conflict in terms of how to deal with this. In some cases, I feel like, and, and to be quite honest, yesterday's video was not the most popular. Um, I rarely get dislikes. I'm not trying to like say that I'm like some, I'm like the best person in the world, but just speaking in general, on average, I rarely get dislikes. There were three dislikes of that reading yesterday. And to me, I'm not trying to attack anybody, but I'm just gonna be real. To me, it feels like there is a level of discrepancy here in terms of how you handle something, how you let go of the burden. And in, in some cases, I'm just going to be real and I'm going to say it how I'm feeling it. But there are some situations in which it feels like someone is fighting for carrying this burden somehow.
this is an unpopular opinion, but what just came through us there, through is there is a certain level of needing to take responsibility. That does not mean that you're taking responsibility for the actions of the people that have abused you, that have treated you poorly, or that have taken advantage of you. That's not your, your responsibility to take. However, you do have a responsibility as an individual being and as an individual soul, you have a responsibility to take in terms of healing from that. Figuring out how you can rectify or reconcile this inner conflict so that you can release these burdens so that you don't are so that you're not carrying the weight of this on your shoulders any longer. But in order for you to do that, you can't always just escape from it. You can't always just push it away. Me personally, escapism doesn't really work so well for me. I could smoke a bunch of weed. I could drink a bunch of alcohol. I could do all kinds of fucking drugs. I could sit at my computer for hours on end and do nothing but play video games. But the more I try to escape it, the more it just keeps coming back up. And it's funny, it's interesting. I, I've, actually dis, I've actually begun to use the whole escapism type thing as a way of dealing with it, but in a weird sense, because I've noticed that like, I, I, I love playing video games, right? I can sit there, if I have the right game or if I'm really into it, I could sit there and literally play it for 24 hours straight. Not gonna lie. But I've noticed that in that time where, and, and, and I don't, and I, I like to play games that, um, you know, you really have to think. Um, one of my favorite games is like Factorio, where you have to build a factory and launch a rocket and and mine mineral uh, and mine um, uh, material like natural materials and 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 uh, automate the assembly of things and just it's such it's such a cool game. Um, that you're basically building your own factory or things like maybe The Sims or things like Starcraft Two or Planet Coaster. Like I'm I'm very much into like simulation and role playing games, right? But even when I'm playing those games. There is, a, there is a level of my mind that, like, these, these games occupy my conscious mind. And when my conscious mind is occupied, that's when all the real shit comes through from the subconscious. And I find myself focused on playing the game in that moment because it's giving me a sense of joy and excitement. But also, when things come up, I allow myself to feel it. I allow myself to accept it. I allow myself to notice it. And I start to get myself in the mode of saying, okay, so what do we do about this? Okay, so what does this mean for me? Okay, this really hurts, but I need to sit here and I need to feel through it because the more I can feel through it, the less it's going to hurt me because the more and more I'm going to come to understand it. You cannot... You cannot just escape your way out of expansion. You cannot ex escape your way. You cannot always, always, and I'm, again, <clears throat> everything isn't going to work for everybody. You have to find your own. Like Carolyn said this in response to Nikki's post. You have to find your own process. But I will, I will never be the type of person to sit here and say, well, just escape from it. Well, don't think about it. Well, don't worry about it. Well, don't focus on it. Because if it's something that's coming up for you that is a recurring theme, it needs to be acknowledged and something needs to be done. Now, okay, I, got, I have to stop there. I have to stop there because we're going into this territory of, um, yes, we're going to stop there. We're going to continue the reading and I'm going to, I'm going to do my best to record a separate thing for this. Okay. Let's continue. I'm going to get one more pull from here, and then we'll see what's going on. So what else can you tell us, please, Spirit? Yeah. All right, look, Four of Wands is at the bottom of the deck. Underneath the Four of Wands is the Queen of Cups to the star to the Ten of Pentacles. You guys, in order to complete these cycles, you have to acknowledge the emotions. You have to feel through it. The only way you are going to really be able to be solid and balanced and foundational, Four of Wands, is facing your emotions, Queen of Cups. That's when the healing happens. That's when the lesson can be learned and the cycle can be completed and you can start 
the new one. Ten of Pentacles, Page of Pentacles. But what I feel like is kind of coming through here is a little bit, I'm going to be honest with you, a little bit of crying over spilled milk or wallowing in the pain. Please take that with a grain of salt. I don't mean to upset anybody. If I'm triggering you, though, instead of escaping from it, instead of clicking off the video, instead of hitting that dislike button out of, this, out of spite, I don't give a shit. Like it, dislike it, whatever. But I'm saying... Instead of clicking off the video, face it. Face it. Your triggers are not your enemy. Your triggers are actually your ally, are actually your friend, because your triggers show you where you need to work on healing. Your triggers show you where your wounds are. And this is something that I say all the time. You're not going to be able to change something until you are aware of it. I, I mean, I couldn't, I could not grow, I could not heal, I could not expand while I was running away from my triggers. Every, every time I got triggered by something, whoop, don't focus on it, let's change the subject. No, don't change the subject. Talk about it, feel it, express it, learn from it, think about it, face it. That's the way you're going to heal this. That's the way you're going to come out of this. That's the way you're going to end the cycle, learn the lesson and start something new. End the, the, the life lesson and start something new. Ten of Pentacles to the Page of Pentacles, okay? Now, that was all at the bottom of the deck. What's come out here for this last round is the Queen of Swords to the Knight of Cups. The Queen of Swords is that energy coming through saying, we are done with this. We are not going to allow this to bother us any longer. We are not going to allow this to keep us from being open-hearted or being the true expressive individuals that we are. But the Queen of Swords is the surgeon here. The Queen of Swords is the effort that cuts the shit out, that cuts out the poison, that cuts out the bullets, if you will. But how are you going to cut out the bullets if you're continually pushing it away? If you're continually putting a band-aid on it, if you're sitting there in your house at a table while your house is on fire and you've got this blank smile on your face saying, this is fine, I can live with this. In some cases, that's what I feel like is going on here. Ten of wands, five of wands. Instead of facing it, Instead of saying, this is my reality, this is what has happened, what does this mean for me, how has this hurt me, how can I heal from this, how can I grow from this, how can I learn from this, I feel like there's an energy of just pushing it away and not dealing with it. That's not going to get you anywhere. And that's what I was trying to say yesterday in the video in terms of the back pain, the constant chronic back pain that I was feeling. I was in the exact same place, you guys. I never wanted to feel, I never wanted to focus on what it is that was coming up for me. And at that time, it was family issues, right? It was me coming to terms with um, the difference between the way I see the world and the way I treat people and the way I approach relationships, interpersonal relationships, and the way people in my family, certain people in my family do. I mean, that's just the tip of the iceberg, but that was one of the things that I was dealing with at the time. And the reason why I kept feeling that chronic pain was because any time any of this came up, I would immediately push it away and I would focus on something else. It wasn't until I stopped doing now. Now it wasn't until I stopped doing that that it was like, okay, now the pain is subsiding because now I'm I'm focusing on it, I'm feeling through it, I'm I, I'm 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 working through it, and that's allowing my energy to flow again. But the reason why I was pushing it away for so long was because I was under the impression, just like I said yesterday, I was under the impression that the more attention I gave it, the more it was going to re recreate that type of situation in my life. And that's not the case. What's going to continue to recreate the situation in your life is not learning from it, not learning the lesson from it. Not, not saying what is really true about this situation and how can I heal from this? How can I change this cycle? And then taking action in terms of that. The Queen of Swords is the surgeon.
The Queen of Swords, in essence, the Queen of Swords comes after the King of Swords in this case because you could say the King of Swords is the energy that looks at it, that sees it for what it truly is, that doesn't try to run from it, that approaches it with the mindset of how do we fix this, how do we heal this? And once you have that understanding under your belt, then the Queen of Swords can come in and say, all right, no more bullshit, we're cutting this out now. Which allows your heart to open up, Knight of Cups which allows you to gain a sense of freedom, okay? All right, um, let's get into some oracle, uh, 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 clarity, yeah. Five shuffles, one, two, three, start with the Ten of Wands and the Five of Wands. Please excuse the manicure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> five of Wands, Ten of Wands. What is this spirit? What else? What can you say to us about this? bottom of the deck you have the nine of cups the nine of cups can re represent two different things it can represent a comfort zone and okay and i just heard wallowing in your own pity all right take it as you take it take it as it resonates or it can represent contentment it can represent happiness it can represent satisfaction nine of cups but in terms of what has come out here to clarify, I feel like the Nine of Cups is the result of doing the work, which in this case would be the satisfaction, the happiness, the contentment. But what has come out here to clarify the Five of Wands and the Ten of Wands is the Three of Pentacles, the Sun, and the Three of Swords. The only way The only way to free yourself of the burden and the conflict, whether that be internal or external, the only way is to face it, illuminate it, become aware of it, the sun and the three of swords, becoming aware of the pain, shining a light on the pain, illuminating the pain, and then working on self-mastery through that. Three of Pentacles. That's how you relieve yourself of this pain. That's how you relieve yourself of the burden. Does not mean that you're not allowed to escape every once in a while. That doesn't mean that you have to sit there and constantly focus on it 24 seven until you get it fixed. No, nobody is saying that. But you cannot run from it because you just keep on running and nothing ever changes. You have to take your power back. You have to take control and say, we are going to fix this. And that's where yesterday's reading came from. We gonna get this work, y'all. I mean, okay, I understand that you've been hurt. You've been abused. You've been neglected. You've been taken advantage of. I mean, run through the gamut. Okay, I get that. But you will forever be a victim of that until you can change the game for yourself. Let's talk about that. The Magician and the Chariot. This is, I, I, I wanna say something. This is not something that's very easy for me to say. This is not a comfortable situ a comfortable discussion for me right now. I'm I have my back is starting to hurt. And maybe this is because I'm driving too hard. Maybe I'm approaching this from too much of a masculine point of view. 
but this is how the message is coming through. And I think part of my pain in terms of this right now, my physical pain in terms of having this discussion or, or, or sharing this message right now is I am not trying to hurt anybody. I am not trying to devalue anybody's, anybody's experience. I'm not trying to tell you to, to suck it up and get over it. Hell fucking not. And if that's what you're taking from this situation, I apologize, but that is not my intention. And I think part of my pain here is my apprehension towards driving this home. And I think part of my pain is in terms of watching how people fell off yesterday after that message. And so that to me is like, well, shit, do I need to sugarcoat this? No. I am never going to sugarcoat anything for anybody here on this channel. So if you're new to me and you're looking for some lovey-dovey, love and light, happy-go-lucky, let's sugarcoat everything to make everyone feel better, you are on the wrong channel. Because we do the work here. We face our shadow. Shadow work is something we definitely do here. But I do believe that there needs to be a balance between shadow work and focusing on what does make you happy. Okay. So part of the pain that I'm feeling in my back right now is me trying to hold myself back. But that's not going to happen. Because, that, that, because I personally feel like that would be a disservice to you guys. I am not here to feed anybody's ego. If anything, I'm here to help you help to help you instruct your ego to take several seats. Okay. Let's talk about the magician and the chariot. What uh, what guidance can you give us here, please, spirit, in terms of that? Yup. Okay. Yup. At the bottom of the deck is the tower. This shit has got to come down. Okay. And what has come out to clarify, you have the five of pentacles and the six of swords. So what we're moving away from in this magician and this chariot energy, what we are mo actively moving away from is a victim mentality. Five of Pentacles to the Six of Swords. Again, please let me re reiterate that I am not trying to devalue your experience. And I am not trying to shame you for feeling like a victim. No. That is not the message here. The message is, though, that you are the only one that will be able to bring yourself out from the cult. And quite frankly... You are the only one that will that can even ever leave yourself out in the cold. Fuck all them and what it is they've done. You no longer need to leave yourself out in the cold by not dealing with it, by not pushing away, by, by, by pushing it away, excuse me, by not taking your end of the, res the, the level of responsibility in saying, how can I change this for myself? How can I heal from this? How can I give myself, show myself the love and the care that they didn't even have, try to show me, right? But that doesn't come from being passive about it. At some point, you're going to have to take action. You are going to have to get into the manifesting seat. You're going to have to get into the driver's seat and literally move yourself away from rough waters to calmer waters. No one else, no one else can or will do it for you. I mean, sure, see, some people may come in and try and st try and step in and help you, but what's that really going to do? I say this to people all the time, especially here on the channel. You can't change anything for anybody else because when you make that change for them, it's not going to stick. They have to make that change for themselves. You have to be the master manifester. You have to get yourself in the driver's seat. You have to tear this tower down with your bare hands and face the shadow work. 
Do the shadow work. Face your shadow side. Why? Because you are unconditionally loved. And that is how you love yourself. By facing your emotions and letting go in order to find balance. Four of Pentacles, Two of Pentacles, but you have to make that choice. The choice to heal is yours. Last thing I want to clarify. Queen of Swords, Knight of Cups. All right, Queen of Swords, Knight of Cups. Nine of Cups is at the bottom of the deck again. When we're clarifying, we have the King of Wands and the Two of Cups. <laughs> what I literally just heard was, this is you having the arrogance and the audacity to love yourself so much that you finally put the end to the situation. You finally put an end to the situation and you finally say enough is enough and you finally work on cultivating the relationship with yourself, which is your first and primary relationship above all else. The relationship with yourself. Being so selfish that you say, I'm going to do what it is I need to do to help and to heal myself and to rebuild and to cultivate this relationship with myself and to find satisfaction and happiness. That is going to bring you fortune, wheel of fortune. That is going to bring you the good luck. That is going to bring you what you want to experience, what you want to achieve, what you want to receive in this life. You have to be so fucking selfish that you say, I don't give a damn what's happened or what you want to tell me about it. I am going to love myself. And that's where this Queen of Swords energy comes in. That cuts out everything that stands in that way. Stands in the way of that. Everything. I don't care who it is or what it is. If it stands in the way of you having a relationship, a beautiful, healthy, and, and mm, responsible relationship with yourself, it gets the boot. Not just the boot. It gets the fucking steel toe boot with a spike on the end of it. Get the fuck out of here. You don't get to destroy this relationship with myself. No one does. But in order for you to do that, you have to take responsibility. You have to. And again, I'm not saying you're taking responsibility for the actions of other people. That is not yours to take. But you do have a responsibility to say when enough is enough. And to stand up and to do something for yourself to heal. Oracle Guidance. Crystal Mandala. Five shuffles, one. Two, three, four, and five. All right, y'all, closing Oracle Guide.
We have two cards, which I find to be beautiful. We have card number 23, Ascended Master Jesus and Rosophia, Meaningful Sacrifice. And we have card number 39, Goddess Sekhmet and Fire Agate, Passion of the Lion Heart. We bring you the blessing of meaningful sacrifice. To manifest your divine destiny, there are times when want must give away to a greater need. It may feel as though you are being denied the very thing that you yearn for the most. However, when meaningful sacrifice is being asked of you, there is a far more generous and loving reality at play. What is being denied now will ultimately create the opportunity for far greater gain. This doesn't necessarily resolve the pain of unfulfilled desire in this moment, but it does soothe your soul with the understanding that if you feel denied, it is only so that your fulfillment can come about in a more extraordinary and generous expression in due course. Interesting. Um, let's just read the first paragraph here, yeah? A meaningful sacrifice is being asked of you. It is the foregoing of a situation that you want so that another more appropriate situation, one that your soul truly needs, can come into being. This meaningful sacrifice is actually a divine blessing, although it may not feel that way initially. It is withholding from you of that which, you, of that which would seduce you away from the truth of your path. The world can be a most intriguing and fascinating place. Being open and curious about life can help you feel energized and inspired. Yet if your body or mind becomes enchanted by that which is not truly meant for you, this leads you away from the path upon which you will actually find real joy, fulfillment, and happiness. Such distractions, as alluring or perfect as they may seem, cannot provide the deep satisfaction for which you yearn. It may even end up causing you unanticipated and otherwise unnecessary pain, which you shall then need to resolve. When this oracle comes to you, at some level, you are working very hard. You are going through an experience where something you want, perhaps very dearly, is being denied to you. The oracle does not say that you can never have what you want. It is bringing you the message that what you truly want and need is being delivered to you and shall manifest with perfect divine love, tenderness, affection, and, of course, timing. It may, make such, it may take much trust for you to accept this, and you may still feel pain in the thwarting of your desire, but the hard work that is required of you... Wait, hold on, let me say that again. It may... Take much trust for you to accept this, and you may still feel pain in the thwarting of your desire or the hard work that is required of you right now. Okay. With the blessing of meaningful sacrifice, however, you are being given the gift of divine reassurance and, the sacred, and a sacred promise. This is a promise of such abundance, such love, such beauty manifesting in your life, that all discipline or loss endured shall become honored with gratitude in your heart, with the recognition that your meaningful sacrifice did indeed allow the universe to pri provide for you with incompatible tenderness and affection. Oh, I'm sorry, and perfection. The hard work that you are enduring or have endured is going to yield so much blessing in your life. The challenge shall eventually give way into pure divine grace. Finally, we have card number 39, Passion of the Lion Heart. We bring you the empowerment of Passion of the Lion Heart. Through passion, you will dedicate yourself with an intensity and discipline that may surprise you. Passion is love activated. It is everything that moves you from within and empowers you to act in the world in ways you would not otherwise dare to even consider. Passion gives you strength plugs you into the eternal energy of sacred fire and generates the ability to accomplish tasks you once may not have believed possible. With great passion, there can be great pain. 
The heart that loves wild and open is also the heart that can feel disappointment and doubt most keenly. The empowerment of the lion heart strengthens your heart to recover from any pain through the power of courage, commitment, and bold, loving devotion to what matters most to you. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee Monday morning. Yeah? Take care. Bye. <laughs>